Troy Aikman and Tom Brady are two of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. They are now broadcasters. Are they still just as competitive and driven as ever? And have either of them experienced contentment? What about in our own lives? Are we chasing success or contentment? And can we have both? Can we experience both? Let's unpack it. Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack parallels, metaphors, and topics in sports that relate to life and faith. I'm Bryce Johnson in Charlotte, North Carolina, joined today. He's coming to us from Florida. He's a returning guest co-host, Brian Goins. On today's episode, we are unpacking a really interesting article by uh, on The Athletic by Zach Kiefer, about Troy Aikman. It's this deep dive about Troy Aikman. We're going to relate it a little bit to Tom Brady and some of the comments that, that he's made recently. And I also finished up the, the Dynasty documentary, which was fantastic. Um, and so we're going to talk about all of those things today. And, and so but most importantly, we're going to talk about contentment. What does it mean to be content? How do we find contentment? Why don't we have contentment? And so, uh, so it's going to be a fun conversation with Brian. Great to have him back on the show. Uh, thanks, everybody, watching on, on YouTube and social media, uh, all the different platforms. Uh, always appreciate when you like and comment and uh, say hello and share it. And so, uh, so really appreciate that. Uh, do want to thank our sponsor, Upward Sports. Check out upward.org slash unpack and start a sports ministry at your church. Upward Sports is the world's largest Christian youth sports organization dedicated to partnering with local churches to use sports outreach to reach the community. And so they offer many different sports, basketball, cheerleading, soccer, flag football, volleyball, baseball, soccer, and soon they're going to have Upward Running. And so we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. Again, it's upward.org slash unpack. Schedule your call today. All right. Let's say hello to Brian Goins. He works at Family Life. He's a speaker. He's a former pastor. He's got an awesome book. I've read it. It's about marriage. It's called Playing Hurt. He also has a podcast called Married with Benefits. Brian, great to be back with you. How are you, man? Oh, man, doing great, Bryce. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. On a topic that I am terrible to talk about, contentment. Come on. Uh, that's right. Who, who, who can be content? That's great. That's right. That's right. The, the last couple of weeks especially have been topics very uh, challenging to me. So today is is definitely uh, along those lines. Um, so we, we just finished up week four in the NFL, and Monday Night Football was was fantastic last night, a nice shootout with uh, with Detroit and Seattle. Our producer is a Seahawks fan, so he's a little bummed today, uh, but but a great mm. performance by, by Jared Goff. But you are a Cowboys fan, so how are you <laughs> feeling after four weeks? Yeah, you talk about, this is perfect, because I don't know that I've been content with the Cowboys in 30 years. <laughs> it, has been, it has been a case study in perpetual frustration. Because it seems like we do, you know, historically, especially whether it was with Romo or now with Dak, like we do great in the regular season and then we can't win a playoff game. So it's like we were we were crowned Super Bowl champs after week one, after beating the Browns, the, the <laughs> incredible Browns. And then we were sunk back to reality, just getting rolled by the Saints and the Ravens to realize we have no run defense. We have um, we basically have two over overpaid players and you know when you got 11 guys on the field two is only going to get you so far yes i i'm i'm concerned i i think they've got some some major issues and it's just it's going to be a Huge. roller coaster ride of a season and i'm not sure even that the regular season will be as good as it's been in recent years no i don't think it will i think i think they may go um may win eight games yeah. like i think they're going to be mean i think the commanders with uh with what you got going on with is it Jaden daniels yeah. i mean he's He's unbelievable, and they've got momentum. And I just think the Cowboys are are overrated, as they always are. And I just can't, I, I can't stand the fact. That I think as long as Jerry Jones is the owner and slash manager, we're we're going to be like this. We're going to have a few great players, and we we underperform. 
It's it's tough. Well, on, on the flip side, here in Carolina, we're just excited about how well we played in a loss. So that's what <laughs> that's what we're working with here. But we were so close. We played so hard. It was it was actually entertaining. We actually had a chance to win. So that's what yeah. we're uh, we're clinging to these days. Uh, I think everybody's motto right now could be if you want to have contentment is at least we're not the Panthers. <laughs> that that gives us contentment is that we know that we're not as bad as the Panthers. Yeah, that's yeah. Great. What do you do as a Panther fan? Like what? I mean, yeah, you cheer because you didn't lose as bad. That's right. That's what we're that's uh, what we're counting on. We're, oh wow, Andy Dalton actually could throw the ball down the field. Ooh, we could we finished some third downs or got some first downs. So right. uh, those are those are the things we're uh, we're celebrating. So that's that's how it goes. But Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to take a look today at a uh, on the athletic. There's an article written. It's a it's you know, a long form profile. This deep dive about Troy Aikman. And so last yeah. night we're listening to Troy Aikman on Monday Night Football. Um, you know he's he's really had a wonderful broadcasting career. But what's fascinating is this this article you know talks about the 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 drive that he has had going back to when he was growing up and his dad put a lot of pressure on him too and. and in many ways, positively put in, you know, the mentality of hard work and being driven. And, and so what has kind of transpired, transpired throughout his, his life is he's experienced a lot of success. A lot of things have gone his way. He's, you know, he won three Super Bowls with the Cowboys. You talk about 30 years. Well, when they won, it was all about Troy and, and leading that team. And of course the players around him, but, but he set the tone and, and was, was key to all that. So here's what the article says. It says, the success everyone saw masked the inner turmoil no one knew about. Aikman's wrestled with it for decades, warring against his own happiness, chasing a finish line he isn't even sure exists. And in his own words, Aikman put it like this, contentment was always a four-letter word. I never wanted to be content. I didn't want to be around anyone who was content. That's just not a place I could land. And so the article describes how disciplined he is and, and has been, his intensity, his drive, his desire to get better, and, and just this desire to, to keep pushing himself. And so even now, all these days later, all these years later, playing days are way over, he wants to be the best at broadcasting. He still wants to be in, in tip-top shape. And so he's obsessed, and he actually likes to be coached even as a broadcaster, he wants you know producers around him and executives around him that push him and coach him, and and you know wants to be coached just as hard as he was when when he was playing, um, and so his competitive juices still are flowing. He's still this competitive guy, and so Brian, as we as we talk about this from kind of the the athlete standpoint, we'll we'll relate it more to our life in a little bit, but but this idea of of, of athletes. The very best are so driven to a level that in many ways we can't even comprehend, but it's so hard for them to never turn it off. And 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 along the way, it's it's just sort of eye-opening to think, man, Aikman didn't even want to be content. Like yeah. he that, that was almost it was it was a four-letter word. It was something he just couldn't he just couldn't be around, which is fascinating. Right. Yeah, he couldn't even he couldn't enjoy the success he had, which we think it's like, man, if I had won super three Super Bowls or if I you know, if I had had any, even just a fragment of, of his success, certainly I would be happy. And you realize a lot of these guys, whether it's him, whether it's Tom Brady, it's like, it's almost like it, it's about the drive. It's about the what's next. And I remember on a small scale as a pastor, that feeling after Sunday, I would go through what I call PMS, post-ministry syndrome, happened every Monday. And it was like, I could, it didn't matter how many accolades I might've gotten from the message. It didn't matter if my wife actually said, this is really good. I could not enjoy the, the, the moment of delivery. And I, and I wonder, contrast that with Eric Liddell, the story about, you know, the, the, um, the runner, you know, from England that, that, um, or from, where was he from? Ireland, Scotland, anyway, from Great Britain. And he was in the Olympics, and when they, when he was talking about his running, he says, when I run, I feel the pleasure of God. Like, there was this sense of, I'm just enjoying the gifts that I've been given. And it was like, for Troy, I don't think he ever saw those as gifts. I mean, the drive, the athleticism, it was something to be worked at constantly and never something that you could actually just enjoy. And I don't know the balance between that, because without the drive, you don't have the, the Super Bowls. 
And yet at the same time, it feels like that success robs you of contentment because you're just thinking about the next success. Man, and and to, to relate this as well, so I, I mentioned I, I, I just finished up the 10-part documentary about the, the Patriots. Yeah. And it is fantastic. Like, it is so eye-opening. It puts it all in perspective on what the Patriots did. And trust me, I, I'm not a Patriots guy. I'm not a Patriots fan by any means. But you you got a little bit of an understanding of what they went through. But they talked about it. Like, it was not fun. They were winning mm. Super Bowl after Super Bowl after Super Bowl, and they weren't really enjoying it to the level that yeah. you would think that that, that they, they would. It was all about, you know, it was about success. It was about winning. It was about working hard, doing your job. But at what expense? And, yeah. and that expense of, of contentment. And, and so what's fascinating, too, is that Tom Brady left New England to, to, to try to enjoy it, to go down to Tampa mm-hmm. Bay to try to enjoy it. And, and we could see it. Like, he loosened up a little bit. He was able to have his personality a little bit more. But now, flash, you know, fast forward to, to right now, Baker Mayfield's down there making comments about how when, you know, when he got there to Tampa Bay, it's like, yeah, yeah, when, they were, when Tom Brady was here, it was a little more stressful around here. <laughs> and, and, and now, and now, you know, Baker Mayfield's Mister Fun Loving Guy. Now, will they win any games? I don't know, but they're probably maybe having a little bit more fun than with Tom Brady. But Tom yeah. Brady had a standard and an expectation, and was pursuing excellence. And he goes down there, and wins a Super Bowl right away. Um, right. So it, it's it's like so. The question kind of today is, well, well, what do we do? How, how, can we chase success and enjoy it? Can, mm. can can we can we work hard and be disciplined while also being content? And, and yeah, so it's, 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 it's tough. It is tough because there's so many things to admire, like reading about and, and when you read that article in The Athletic, and I hope that you're going to send it out to everybody because it really is fascinating. So much of those things you go, that's what I want my kids to be. I want my kids to be able to work hard. I want them to have drive. I want them to have this sense of, man, I'm going to outwork, you know, talent. Um, work, work beats talent when talent doesn't show up. You know, that whole thing. It's not just about the talent. And and Troy recognized that. He's like, I'm not going to, he definitely wasn't the fastest quarterback around. I mean, the guy was a robot in many ways, but yet he outworked everybody. But that that outworking and not enjoying it, there's something unhealthy about that. I don't know if you read in the article, he hasn't had a, he hasn't taken a warm shower in like 20 years. He's been <laughs> taking cold showers every morning. And I just go, okay, there's something I admire about that. And then there's also something go, why? Like at some point in time, take a warm shower. It's all right, Troy. Enjoy it's okay. shower, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, at what point, and I think about like just the Stoics, the, the philosophers that said, you know, it, your body is evil and the whole goal is to get your body to be under full control. And it's this lie that, that you can actually manage that health when we're living in broken bodies. At some point in time, Troy's body's going to break down. At some point in time, he's not going to be able to keep it to that level. And I think he's starting to realize that. I think he's realizing that with age is like he can't keep up. He talked about um, going out with a practice team and how he was going to run the practice team recently. in his 50s. Recently. Yeah, recently in his 50s. Like, we're going to show them. And it's like. At, at some point, Troy, you're not going to be able to show them. And then what is your identity? What's your life? What's your, where's your joy going to come from? Gosh. And I wonder what he passes on to his kids. Like, did he, I, I, the question I would like to ask Troy is, and any of these guys is, how would you raise your kids? Would you raise them differently or the same? Mm. And if your kids aren't as driven as you, what does that mean about them? Mm. Wow. Can no. they be content? It's a good it's a good question. So so let me read a couple more quotes from the article. So so Zach Kiefer, the author or the writer of this article, he says, years passed, the more Aikman ran from contentment, the more it robbed him of his own happiness. His first marriage fell apart, then his second. So he went to work on himself, trying to balance something that took years for him to accept. The traits that made him a Hall of Famer were the same ones keeping him from life's simple joys. And then Kiefer says he realized everyone doesn't think like a quarterback and that being content wasn't a sign of weakness or worse yet, a character flaw. And, and so Troy's been on this journey, but the article ends where Aikman acknowledges, I have found contentment, if you can believe it, and it's a really good feeling. And, and so I don't know, it doesn't really fully explain all of, of I know, the, 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 I want to know. Okay. So what is it? It's kind of right. like what I, I think about Paul in Philippians where he says, I have found the secret 
of contentment. He's like, he, he goes on to talk about how it says that um, I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. And I'm going, okay, well, explain that a little bit to me. I need <laughs> to know more because what is the secret of contentment? Can mm -hmm. I really enjoy life when I don't have the success of others? When I, uh, I may not be as gifted as, as other people. I may not have the breaks that other people have. I mean, that's a, that's a big question, Bryce, mm -hmm. to think about when he's when he's talking about this it, it almost feels like okay it's a feeling well feelings come and go that's right that's right that's and good so yeah i i'm i'm just i'm fascinated by it makes me think about michael jordan too when you watch uh the last dance i don't that's know right. if you saw that oh yeah oh yeah but you saw the same type personality traits the same type um the what did, what did he say these uh where he talks about the traits that made him a Hall of Famer, like the traits that made a Hall of Famer in Michael Jordan are the same ones. That's right. And it, and it kept him from, from I think, real joy and contentment because the only contentment you can find is the next win, whether it's gambling, whether it's on the golf course, whether it's on the basketball court, it's just about the next win. Gosh, and and so it's a really tough way to live. And and, and now if you look at Jordan, it's kind of sad too. It's like it, mm -hmm. kind of what his life has, has become in many ways. Um, and then you read about- and I was going to say one thing about before we leave Michael Jordan, a great thing to do. I don't know if you've done this is compare the speeches between David Robinson and Michael Jordan in the Hall of Fame. Man. They both were inducted the same years. And when you think about what Michael Jordan said compared to what David Robinson, the admiral, what he talked about and what was important to him in terms of he really had a center in Jesus Christ. The faith really meant a lot to him. But you compare what David said about his sons and about how much how proud he was of them, how uh, that they that it didn't matter what they did on the basketball court. That wasn't their identity. It didn't matter about any of living up to all of dad's accolades. Like he wasn't expecting them to be a Hall of Famer compared to what Michael Jordan said of like, hey, I feel pity for my boys. And it's because they'll never be as great as me. And it's like, wow, man, talk about setting your kids up for counseling that drive is actually keeping him from having a good relationship with his kids, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. And you see it in these personal lives with Aikman and with all these guys, like they, they have relational tr you know, chaos because they can't find that sense of joy and contentment. Man, no, it's, it, it is. It's sad, but, but here, here's what I wanted to do today. I want this to, to relate to our own lives because although you know, we're not winning Super Bowls and, and most people <laughs> uh, watching and listening aren't going to get to this level of, of success that we're talking about with, you know, some of the greatest players of all time in their, in their, in their sport. But I do think the, the, the drive, the motivation, the mindset, the perspective that many of us wrestle with robs us of contentment. And, yep. and so be, because here's, here's what we can relate to. We always want more. It's never enough. And we can't slow down because if we slow down, then it seems like, well, now I'm just being complacent. And, and so the, 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 the conversation between complacency and contentment is another conversation you know, worthy to, to unpack. But, but many of us are driven. We're highly motivated. We like to work hard. We, we desire to, to succeed and, and be at our best. And, and so I, I know that that's my mentality, and I'm, I'm always trying to get better and, and grow. But, but if I'm honest with myself, at the same time, I, I often am, am frustrated and stressed out mm -hmm. and feel the pressure. And, and, and can't enjoy the process and, and can't find contentment because because here, here's it hit me today. The saying that I probably struggle with the most is, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. but. And that's what robs me of contentment because, you, you know, just talking about the ministry with unpacking it, we've had tremendous, wonderful opportunities and, you know, even success. We'll use the word success at times. But, but oftentimes I'll go, yeah, but. And here's what happens either compare, compare to another ministry, compare to a, another business, or compare to, well, we're not where we want to be or where we could be. And, and so now all of a sudden, well, I can't be content with where we're at. Yeah, but, yeah, but. And, and so um, in what ways, Brian, do you relate to just sort of this, you know, the, the, the drive to work hard and be at our best, but at the same time, it is even robbing you of contentment. Yeah. Yeah. But let me just say, that's a great, that's a great phrase. Cause I, I do that every time with a compliment. Mm. Somebody says, man, I really appreciated what you said. And it's like, well, yeah. And in my mind I'm going, yeah, but I could have nailed that illustration more, or I could have said it like this, or that felt like a rough draft as opposed to just humbly accepting a compliment, 
humbly just saying, man, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to do this in this moment. You know, I think about when Paul says about how he approaches every situation with gratitude. Like I think, and the the ancients would say there's a discipline to gratitude. It's an actual spiritual discipline that it takes a, a, a new muscle to go, no, instead of me going, yeah, but it's me going, yes, and, you know, yes, and thank you. Thank God for this, for the opportunity for, and genuinely try to appreciate it. And I think for most of my life, I remember my dad said when I was a kid, uh, when I was in high school, he said, Brian, it seems like you, you appreciate your failures a lot more than your successes. And I never realized how meaningful that was in that moment. Um, I just, I couldn't even grasp my, my head around it, but I do. I, I highlight failure more than I highlight success or even take the moment to enjoy it. And I think about these articles are just saying these, these guys just don't feel a contentment. That's what keeps them growing towards success, but yet also robs them of actually enjoying the success they have. It sounds like a great play of the devil. It sounds like a great bait and switch of going, you want success, but what's going to get you to success is actually going to keep you from enjoying success. Mm. And so it's a Lord going, no, you need to seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. I mean, you compare that to Eric Liddell, who's going as this runner in the Olympics, now, I'm going to choose not to run on Sunday because that's my Sabbath. And so I don't have to have the success because I already have the success of God in me. I already have the sense of approval from God in me. And actually to believe that. I remember a counselor told me that when I was struggling with depression. And he just said, you know, you actually don't believe that God loves you. You know it, but you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. And that's why you keep trying to find the feeling. That's why Aikman's going, I feeling contentment. Why? Is it because you're taking cold plunges every day now and <laughs> yoga and meditating? And those are, again, not bad things, but if it's just about chasing that feeling, he'll probably drive for a certain set of feeling. And when that feeling passes, then what? Mm. Gosh, it's Man. good. It's good. All right, let, let's dive into some scripture. And so you already mentioned sure. what, what Paul writes, but you, you didn't, you didn't finish it. So let's finish it. No. So Philippians 4, 11 through 13 says, uh, this Paul writing, not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. And so, you know, we take this verse out of context all the time, but this is all the what, time. This, this is what gives us true contentment. It, God's strength, Jesus within yeah. us, the, the power of God within us gives us the ability to be content. But so often we're chasing the feeling of contentment by whatever our circumstances are, and we want them to be good, then we'll be content. Um, and and then also, you know, I think for for us as as followers of Jesus, we we've got to really you know, address this tension of, well, wait, why am I chasing more? Why am I chasing mm -hmm. success? And and what is that really about? Because if our contentment is in Christ, we it, then we're good. Like we, we can just yeah. say, yeah, if if this works out and and the, our ministry grows a little bit more, great. But if it doesn't, I'm still content. But it doesn't mm. it doesn't mean that I'm not going to continue to work hard. It just right. it just means that and I, I want to do things with excellence. And even before the show, I said, oh, it's pretty good. And you pushed me on that, which is good. Yeah, we got it. Hey, we want to have an excellent show today. Mm -hmm. um, the video quality. We want it to be as good as right. it can. But if this if this show today doesn't reach a million people, I can be content with the hundreds or thousands or how many watch this today, but I can be content because I, I, I honored God. I did what God called me to do today. Can yeah. I find contentment? How do I do that? I rely on his strength. Not on, not on my own strength to be able to be content. Because in my own desires and, and chasing, I want to prove, right? I wanna, I've got a chip on my shoulder. I, I've, got a, I, I've got insecurities. And so if I let that drive me, well, then I'm going to be discontent. And I'm going to be miserable. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to feel stressed. And I'm going to be angry and frustrated. But when I rest in him, and hey, I'm content with, with, with whatever the circumstance I'm in, my contentment is found in him through his strength. So... I'll, sorry, I'm going off, but I'll let you jump in there. No, yeah, you're preaching, man. Bring, bring the, uh, get the soapbox out. Step on it. <laughs> you're doing it. So I, I think about that verse. It's funny how many. I wonder how many athletes have Philippians four thirteen, you know, tattooed on their body. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. And 
And it is taken out of context in the sense of it all, it feels like it's all about whatever object that we have that we want. That's what that verse is going to help me do. So it's going to help me get to the Super Bowl. It's going to help me make this team. It's going to help me whether you're in business or whatever it might be. It's like it's going to God is going to help me. He's going to strengthen me to do this thing that will help me feel some sense of accomplishment. And when reality is that that's the back end of the verse, those first those verses right before it. Paul's going, no, it's about even when I have nothing, when I failed, when I'm facing hunger, when I don't know, you were reading out of the message, I think, but it's like, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all of that through Christ who strengthens me. I can, I can, when I'm stuck in prison, Christ is going to strengthen me. When I have lost every game, when I'm 11, you know, when Troy was going his first year, I think he was 11. He's like, what is it going to take to win in this league? And you go, can can you be content even in those moments? I know that that's that's a hard leap. Like, can I be content when I'm losing all the time? And I don't know, Bryce. Like, I know when I'm losing, it's like I, I, I'm in my kids. When my kids are this way, it's like my kids are on a bad soccer team. What do I do as a parent? How do I get them on a good soccer team? Mm. I want to change the circumstance rather than help them in the midst of their circumstance. Mm. And yeah. I think as parents, we want to shift schools. We want to shift churches. We want to shift um our, our kids on their on their athletics because it's like if i could just get the right coach if i could then i think it'd be winning and then that's the secret to life as long as we're winning that's the secret to life and paul's going yeah that's not the secret that's right that's right and and yeah i think we just have to evaluate okay what lies am i buying and then what is really at the core of my motivation what, like why yeah. why do i want to be excellent why do i want to work hard why am i disciplined why am i driven and why, why do I want success? What is that about? And, 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 mm. and, and, and identifying the, you know, the, 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 the worldly, the sinful motivations that are there, because if those are the things that, that are motivating us, then ultimately, yeah, we're going to be robbed of contentment. But, but if the, the, the drive is, man, I, I want to become more like Jesus. I, I, I want to do what he's, he's calling me to do. And I, I want to, you know, honor him in all that I do. If, if that is our motivation, then, then, then the, the results aren't, we're not driven by outcomes. And, and so we can actually enjoy and find contentment with wherever we're at. Um, yeah. Because, because we're always, and we, I, yeah. No, I was going to say, that's good. I was thinking, I keep thinking for some reason, Micah 6, 8 is running through the back of my head. You know, what does the Lord require of you? It's like, what does God expect of you? Because ultimately it, it really is about, am I choosing God's expectations or am I choosing my expectations? And when my expectations don't get met, I feel disappointed. You know, Troy talks about it and and all of these guys and all of us, we feel it. Jen told me just the other day, she's like, you're perpetually frustrated. And that's my wife, Jen. And she always points out blind spots in my life, which I don't always appreciate in the moment. And I wanted, and I got really frustrated by that comment <laughs> that I'm perpetually frustrated. And it's because she's seeing a pattern that my, my when my expectations aren't met at work, when I, people aren't listening to me, when I'm not getting the level of success that I think that I should be, I, I feel disappointed, I feel depressed. And I don't look at what God's expectations are. And Micah 6, 8 talks about that. What does God expect of you? What does he require of you? To act justly. So love, look for look for ways, like what's sad is that I'm not angered by the injustice that's in the world. I'm not angered by um, where, where things aren't living up to, to how we could love people better, to act justly, That's what, to, to love mercy, to look for those that need help and how do I bring help to them? And then to walk humbly with my God. Like, is that, is that what I'm basing my value, my, my life on? Like how I'm looking for how to right the wrongs in society? How am I looking to love my neighbor as myself? And how am I looking to love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength? That's really what that verse is all about. And yet that's not my scoreboard. You know, Troy even talked about how he, when he first started out with Buck uh, on the broadcasting, I can't believe he's been on for 23 years, that they're the longest running team time has passed by like it's gone by quick i was like i thought for sure that'd be madden and Summerall, but he said the thing that's tough about broadcasting is there's no scoreboard anymore and i'm like that's it that's our problem is that we we have a scoreboard always in our mind what am what am i winning or am i losing and god's not even asking that question he's like it's not about winning and losing it's about loving loving him first loving others and then walking humbly with him and man, do I evaluate my day based on that? Mm. I, I don't usually do that. Mm. It's very convicting. It's very challenging. And, and so 
the the encouragement for us today is yeah let, let let's consider and and examine all right do I have contentment why don't I and what's robbing me of that that contentment and 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 you know we're talking about quarterbacks that had all this success and it's like wait are they real they're they still can't find contentment in all of that, all the success, right. and they're still they're still driving and trying to find it. And you know, maybe Troy has found it now. He says he he says he has, and I don't know to to what that that means spiritually. And I know for, I know from scripture that the the only lasting contentment is found in Christ, because we can mm-hmm. maybe find it fleeting here or there, but but usually what we're chasing when we're chasing more of the world, more success, more power, more prestige. All of that is a moving target. There, there's no finish line. Troy talked about that, about the finish line. There's no finish line. And so if that's what we're, we're yeah, we're always going to be discontent. And I'm guilty of that because I, I, it's, a moving, it's a moving line. I move it. Once I get there, I go, yeah, all right, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, we could have done more. Ah, we could have been better. But, but if we just rest in Christ and say, man, he's, he's taking care of my salvation. I'm going to be with him forever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest in his love and grace. I, I, I can be content in that. And, and I, I can find my strength in him. Let me share a couple more verses. First Timothy six, six through eight says, but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. I mean, do we believe that? Do we live by that? Um, and then Hebrews 13, five, keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And then uh, Luke 12, 15. Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And so the other, and these are separate conversations and we've done kind of a couple weeks ago, I talked about uh, jealousy, but, but greed and jealousy and comparing, those things are robbing us of contentment as well because we're, we're looking around and, oh, what do they have? Ah, now I'm discontent with what I've got. Um, and oh, I want more, and so then we're discontent. Um, and so if we've man, if we've got food and and water, and and let's face it, here in North Carolina, the the mountains of of North Carolina, that's what they need. They just need their basics. They need food right. and water. And so you know, today I started complaining because I had to go around traffic today. And it's like, whoa, 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 what am I doing? And we have to put yeah. that in perspective too. Um, and and define, all right, man, gosh, if I've got food and water, I can be I can be content. Is that, do we believe that? That's a, that's a tough thing to, to grasp. Yeah, Bryce, if I, if I had to, I'd be ashamed, I think, of the amount of time, my, how much real estate in my brain has been taken up with comparison. Mm, mm. You know, how much, how much time have I put myself on the bench of life because I am worried more about what my gaps mm. more than what being grateful for what God has given me. Mm, mm. And and I don't, I don't have secrets to like, that's the thing is like, when I read Paul going, I've learned the secret of, of being content. I've learned the secret of having to live with a little and living with much. And I really am asking, okay, what is that secret? And, and I, and I don't know how to have an easy answer, but I think you're hitting on some of it. You know, it's catching us in that perspective. Like when you say the yeah, buts, do you in that moment go, I, I need to repent. I need to s- stop that. And then put on something else is what Paul says, you know, put on joy and peace and and patience and kindness, put on the fruits of the spirit. And this is a guy that used a ton of athletic metaphors. You know, this is a guy that, that I think really was a sports guy. He would be on your podcast. If you were, (laughs) I think he would love to come on this podcast because he loved watching sports. He used a lot of sports metaphors. I think about in Philippians earlier in that passage in chapter three, where he talks about Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself having to take hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what's behind and straining towards what's next, he's talking about winning the prize. I press on to the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And many would say that's a running metaphor, that he's he's going for something, but what's he going for? He's going for that peace in Christ and uh, versus whatever it is we're putting in place of that. What do we fill in the blank with that? Yeah, but I need this. Yeah, but I need that. And so I, and I wonder if, if there's a, the principles of contentment, if one of them, I think the disciplines of gratitude, but I think the discipline of Sabbath is another one. Just evaluate your life. Is there, are there moments where you're taking Sabbaths every day? I think God gave Sabbath as a gift to man, not for us to serve, to serve God in a way, but for actually for God to serve us, to say one day a week, we're not in the pursuit of more. 
We're not in the pursuit of, um, of, of just anesthetizing ourselves and our soul with screens and with things of this world that are trying to give us a feeling, whether it's pursuing more, or pursuing things that are not ultimately helpful for us. It's just, can I rest and be recharged by God? Can I be in his presence? And I think we're finding more and more that it's hard just to rest in Christ because I wanna be on my screen. I wanna be pursuing more, whatever it might be. And so maybe one of the things that per, to the secret is, do we put the, the principles that God has already given us in place? Are they in the rhythms of our life? Or is everything that we're doing trying to pursue more or trying to experience more? That's right. We're not, we're unwilling to, to slow down because then we feel like, uh oh, now I'm getting behind. Now I, oh, I and that, I think that was part of what Troy was talking about, why he didn't like contentment or he, he thought it was a bad thing is because then you're settling. And, and I think to your point about the resting, we're, we're, we're like, well, no, I'm slowing down. I'm pausing. I'm, I'm settling for where things are at right now and I'm not going to pursue anymore. And we, yeah. and I think too often we view that as a bad thing, whereas no, it's actually a gift to your point. It's a yeah. good thing. To say no, and it, I'm, I'm it takes work to rest. It takes work to stop. Yeah, to cease. You know, when and, and even it says, "Be still and know that I'm God." And there's an idea of cease striving, where Paul talks about just cease striving. It's like it's I, it takes work for me to stop. But, but if we don't, if we don't, if we don't do that, what ends up happening is we're constantly thinking about what I need to get next. That's right. So that's that's good man i want to i want to be that way i want to be content yeah. with the little or the much that's right and it and again it doesn't mean that we don't continue to to you know desire to grow but but it's not getting frustrated and and angry and discontent when we're not where we want to be or, or moving forward um it's being content in christ wherever we're at whatever's going on whatever the circumstance so uh so man good stuff brian really appreciate your perspective and uh always 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 fun uh doing a show with you so thanks for uh for being on today well at least you're going to be able to try out this whole thing of contentment with your panthers this year <laughs> be content with little that's it that's it in the losses we're trying to be content with hey, at least we got andy <laughs> dalton out there so that that's right but uh all right man well thanks so much he's he's brian goins uh appreciate it brian joining us here on unpacking it and uh encourage everybody to uh to check out his podcast married with benefits and uh and so good stuff from him thanks to aaron our our producer i'm bryce I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected, and through faith, I've been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well, and I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together with contentment. How about that? Have a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you next time right here on the Unpacking It Podcast.